Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. George Church as we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is our pastor, Father Paul, assisted by Deacon Greg. Our intentions for this Mass are Gary Lassandrello, Catherine M. Bingham, and Marion Habercorn. Lots going on at St. George this week. Lent begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Ashes are distributed at the 815 Mass and the 7 p.m. Evening Mass. There will also be a 3.30 p.m. prayer service with the distribution of ashes. Little Black Books are available at church entrances along with the CRS Rice Bowls, our Lenten almsgiving program. <laughs> Stations of the Cross are every Friday night during Lent at 7 p.m. Please join us. There are receptacles in the narthex of church for your previous year's palms, if you have brought them along. Strike It Rich tickets are currently on sale. Winners will be drawn at St. George School Super Bingo on March 23rd. Tickets for the raffle and the Super Bingo are now available at the school office and the rectory. St. George School thanks you for your support. Next week, Pro-Life is sponsoring a Lenten Prayers for Life. A variety of prayer cards will be available at the exits of church. Please take one home and pray for life during Lent. Please silence all your cell phones now or any electronic devices and stand and welcome each other. Good afternoon, everyone. Please grab a hymnal and join in singing number 321. Gather us in, number 321. St. George. We pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. For those of you who have been around for a while, you may remember Father John Doyle. Father John was the associate pastor here from 1985 to 1992. He passed away this week after 53 years of priesthood. So let's raise him up in our prayers uh, today as a parish, as we remember the goodness that he brought here to our parish. We continue to pray for Roberto Marcado, who was associate pastor here in years gone by. He left active ministry. He got married, has a couple children, and his family was in a terrible accident car accident and his wife is in very, very serious condition. So we've got a couple people who we really need to pray for. We've got a whole lot of other people to pray for too all around us in our lives, the people who we care, the people we bring in our hearts now. So let's raise all those folks who we love who are in need of our prayer and raise up those who we do not love as we should. Lord Jesus, 
You are the great prophet who has arisen in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were unafraid to reach out to the outcast. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you preach the good news of salvation to all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God, who teaches us that you abide in the hearts of those who are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and he shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since in fact he is unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread a report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Our 
Our scriptures today show us a stark contrast. In the book of Leviticus, those with leprosy are told to make it obvious that they are sick and to separate themselves from the community. Now, in those days, leprosy was kind of shorthand for most any skin disease, but it was enough to strike fear in the hearts of people. So the best thing to do was just keep them away. That must have been terrible for them. The shame, the isolation, <clears throat> the humiliation. On the other hand, the idea to keep the larger community safe, well, that's a good thing. In the gospel, we see how Jesus dealt with the very same issue. His approach was strikingly different. He doesn't shun the man with leprosy. He doesn't tell him to go away. The man says, if you will it, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I do will it. We see two things about Jesus here. First, he truly cares about the man as a person, as an individual. This lone man, afflicted and rejected, Jesus, without hesitation, touches him, touches him, and the man is healed. So Jesus sees him as an individual, valued and cared for. Secondly, Jesus wills his healing he wants this man not only to be well, but also to be a part of the community again. His healing gives him a place and restores his freedom. This is what the church does as we go about our ministry in the world. We care about the individual and we care about the whole community. And the community of the church is literally the whole world. Today is Pledge Day for the annual Catholic Appeal. This is our opportunity to express our appreciation for the community we share in the church and also care for the needs of the individual. We should never underestimate the good the church does in the Archdiocese of Chicago. The work we do in education, care for the poor, and outreach to the elderly, developmentally disabled, and the homeless. I was astonished to learn that the church in Chicago is helping 11,000 refugees with food, shelter, and clothing, just the bare basics of living. 11,000 people. We are assisting poor parishes, and we can be proud that our contributions help support the seminary. And one of St. George's favorite sons, Tim Berryhill, will be ordained a priest on May 18th. The work of the church goes on, and it's because of people like you who make so much good happen. As we do our part for the Archdiocese, so we can help ourselves. Now, the goal that we have for the Archdiocese is a little over $60,000. Anything that comes in over and above that amount will come back to us. Now, you can see in today's bulletin some of the things that we've done with the rebates that we've received in recent years. These are just a few of the items that we've been able to do. This year, if we're able, we hope to work on refurbishing the Marian Shrine and refresh our beautiful parish life center. The center is now 30 years old and needs some ceiling tiles to replace the old ones that are sagging and discolored. The room dividers need replacing and it needs a fresh coat of paint. After 30 years, a fresh coat of paint. So I'm asking that you consider, as I am doing, pledging $1,000 to be paid over the course of the year. I know that may not be possible for some. Others might be able to do more. In any case, what I'm really asking is that you use that amount as a prayer point. And whatever conclusion you come to in prayer, that will be pleasing to God and will make a difference to others. So, let's get to it. In the pews, you'll find these pledge envelopes. I ask that you please pick one up. There should be pencils with them. Now, if you already received the mailings from the Cardinal and you already made your pledge, you've done your duty. So just think good thoughts, okay? All right, just think good thoughts. But for the rest of us who haven't done it yet, I invite you now to do that. 
So if you just start filling in your basic information, like first name Paul, spouse, no such luck. Um, <laughs> So wish, if you wish to include your telephone number and email, that's great. But the bottom line there is really important. Please credit my gift to St. George. If you are not from St. George, it's spelled G-E-O-R-G-E. -E. Now, as I mentioned, I'm pledging $1,000, and, you know, this can be paid for in a number of different ways. Of course, they're encouraging six monthly payments. Um, that's not going to work for me. Um, so when I fill out the credit card information, you'll see on the other side of the flap a recurring monthly gift of, and I'm, since it's now already February, I'm going to ask for $100 a month to be taken. So that will bring it up and only through December 2024. So it works out that way. So you can, you can kind of customize it whatever way that you wish. So when you're through with that, I would ask you to please um, separate that flap and put it inside the envelope. And now, if I could ask you, please, to uh, pass those to the center aisles, if you would. Make it easier for the ushers to please pick those up. Okay, ushers, come on down. So if you haven't been able to determine your pledge, we'd ask that you do that maybe over the next week. We'll be doing this again next weekend for those who may have missed the opportunity. Even if you feel you can only give a small amount, we want as wide participation as possible. That's what it really is all about, as many people as possible to uh, be a part of this. And ushers, don't forget the people upstairs. You're not getting away with anything up there. I see you up there. You know, Jesus turned everybody's expectations upside down when he touched the leper. In doing so, he broke down ancient barriers, restored the man's dignity, and brought him back to the community. When we as a church restore people's dignity, when we heal those who are hurting, when we bring them back to us, we also restore dignity and healing to our community itself. We are all meant to see each other as brothers and sisters, made so in Jesus Christ. Thank you for your generosity and all the things that you do to make St. George a blessing. We stand together and we profess that which we most deeply believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is our God who brings us healing and makes us one with the community. So we ask now that the Lord would hear our prayers. For all who lead the church, that they may find new strength in fervent prayer and cheerful service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who hold public office, that they may promote the common good and seek justice for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer evil and injustice, that they find deliverance and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they be restored to health, and for their caregivers, that they be sustained by faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may this year be a year of blessing and grace for the needy, thanks to our generous support of the annual Catholic Appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, may they be granted the eternal rest for which they long. And we remember Fred Zeplatosh, Linda Roscoe, Reverend John Doyle, and Esther Kelzavera. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness and peace, you care for each one of us as your individual children. Bless us, Lord, so that we may see one another as brothers and sisters, joined together in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please turn to song number 497 and join in singing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 497.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O Lord, may this sacrifice cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember your servant, Father John Doyle, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, St. George, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gratitude for all that God has given us, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As those in the parking lot to please turn on your lights. Our communion song is number 474, In Every Age, number 474.
like to invite Elma Leonard. She has an important message she'd like to share with all of us. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elma Wieset Leonard, and I'm here today to share with you one of the most impactful outreach programs at St. George Church, Daybreak Shelter. Daybreak Shelter, located in Joliet, provides shelter for up to 120 individuals, including men, women, and children, as they work towards rebuilding their lives. They offer three months of stability and family accommodations. Daybreak Shelter is a beacon of hope for the homeless in our community. While at the shelter, Catholic Charities help the residents in finding jobs and connect them with government agencies. The residents in the shelter also work around the fa facility doing dishes, mopping floors, and cleaning their living quarters. The residents in Daybreak Shelter, well, they are our neighbors. They are your child's classmates. It's the ladies stocking shelves at the Joliet Sam's Club. They are our brothers and sisters who at this time simply need our help. St. George Church has a commitment to Daybreak Shelter, and we serve dinner two to three times each month. It has been such a great experience volunteering and meeting the residents of Daybreak Shelter. I find myself singing as I'm preparing for the meals. For me, it's a happy feeling to cook for others. I'm not a demonstrative person who gives out hugs and kisses freely. I have a hard time saying I love you. But when I cook and serve a delicious meal at the shelter, it's a way of saying to my brother or sister, I love you. The meal says, have hope, have faith. The meal says, it will be okay. The sun will shine again. That's why I love this ministry. Al and Fran Funkscali lead this wonderful ministry. We meet here at the St. George parking lot around 3.30 p.m. We carpool and drive to Joliet. At the shelter, we have about two and a half hours to prepare the food, and then we serve dinner at 6.30 p.m. Last Saturday, we served roast chicken with gravy, homemade mashed potatoes, corn, green beans, country-style biscuits with honey butter, and bread pudding with vanilla glaze. It was pretty darn good. It was a meal of comfort. We prepare 300 meals a month, the St. George volunteers donate or bring ingredients to help to provide the meals at daybreak. But for the meat, for the meat and other more expensive staples, we rely on the contribution of our St. George parishioners to help us defray the cost of groceries. We collect once a year during Super Bowl weekend, and I urge you to join us in supporting Daybreak Shelter through donations, volunteerism, and prayers. Together, we make a difference. Thank you, St. George, for your unwavering support. We will be at the church exit doors. Thank you. Thank you, Elma, and to all of our volunteers. We love you. We love you, see, it's it's easy to say, it's even better when you meet it. So, so thank you for showing how you meet it by the service that you offer to, to people in need. And that's, that's what we're all a part of, folks. And so I'm very grateful to those who uh, help out at the Daybreak Shelter from St. George. It's one of the ways that we make a difference, a very concrete difference in people's lives. Let's stand together and pray for God's continued blessings. O oh Lord, having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please join in one more prayer, number 502. Go make a difference, number 502.